Everybody has a dream at some point. Something you could do for the rest of your life that'll make you happy. But achieving it isn't always easy. An American in Paris presents to us three characters who all have ambitious dreams. Jerry Mulligan wants to be a successful painter, Adam Cook wants to be a concert pianist, and Henri Barrel wants to marry Lise Bouvier and move to America. So what obstacles do they face? Jerry is a broke independent painter living and working in a small one-room apartment. He goes to the street corner every day to sell his paintings in hopes that someone will buy them. Those hopes finally come true when Milo comes along and offers to buy some of his paintings. He's so taken aback by the fact that someone actually wanted to buy his paintings that he realized he never actually gave any of them a price. After she offers to pay 15,000 francs for each of them, he agrees to go back to the hotel with her where Milo starts making advances on him. He's initially put off by Milo's generosity, thinking that her motives were only driven by romantic interest. But after giving her the benefit of the doubt, Jerry is handed the opportunity he's been waiting for to become a big successful painter when Milo offers to sponsor him. Later on, she even gives him a new studio to work in and sets him up for an exhibition. And then he meets Lise, and suddenly his priorities are shifted. He becomes totally infatuated with her, and even after being rejected a few times, he manages to make her go out with him. Now with newfound happiness outside of painting, Jerry's new dream is to be with Lise. Still, he agrees to take up Milo's offer on the one condition that he pays her back for everything. After he broke up with Lise and went to Milo to fulfill his romantic needs, he had all but completely set himself up for life. But once he sees Lise at the party and learns that she's moving away with Henri to America... Milo. Milo, I'm a fake. I'm not full of life and good spirits, it's just the reverse. I shouldn't have brought you tonight, I'm sorry. That girl? Yeah. In the nightclub? I'm in love with her. I think I need some champagne. He essentially dissolves the best chance he had at being a big shot painter, but at least for him he gets to be with the girl he really loves. Adam really doesn't have it much better than Jerry does. He aspires to be a concert pianist. When first introduced to him, we learn that he was sent abroad as a reward for his talent, but he has nothing to show for it. He laments how he feels like he's the world's oldest child prodigy, as he has already spent a year in Paris on his 8th fellowship, still completely unemployed. In the middle of the film, we get to see Adam dreaming that he's performing in a concert not just as the pianist, but as the conductor, the string section, the percussion, and even the audience cheering for an encore. It's clear from this scene that he thinks very highly of himself and his skills as a pianist, which makes him all the more jaded to know that he's never actually made it this far. He could have seen this dream fulfilled, as he used to work for Henri. Although he no longer works for him, he still provides music for Henri to sing along to for the majority of his songs, and even joins him in duet. It's unknown why Adam quit working for him, especially since it seems he still enjoys performing with him. Perhaps because he hates the idea of working since he feels like he would become a slave to the habit, and he would end up losing interest in music. If nothing else, he at least has the citizens of Paris who love hearing him play. Henri even expressed how he used to be a fine partner, but unlike Adam, Henri carried on his career working as an entertainer. At this point in Henri's life, he's in his prime and he's on top of the world. He's an incredibly talented singer, dancer, and all-around great performer. When he's not performing on stage, he takes to the streets and sings his heart out, gathering the attention of all the kids and adults on the block. He's a kind fellow and everyone in the neighborhood recognizes him and never misses a chance to greet him. The only thing he wishes to have now is to marry Lise and move to America with her where they can live out the rest of their lives in luxury. Uh, we could get married and go together. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Oh yes, yes. When would you go? Oh, not for a few weeks. John will have to see first about bookings. Oh, but it could be beautiful. A honeymoon on the boat, then America. Oh, Lise, Lise, you love the Americans. <laughs> Yeah. When Henri describes what Lisa's like to Adam, we get a visual representation of all of her personality traits, doing more to describe her than what words ever could. It's clear that he thinks the world of her, which makes it all the more heartbreaking for him when he decides to let her go so she can be happy with someone else. Ironically enough, even though Henri had basically already achieved both Jerry and Adam's dreams, he seems to have arguably gotten the worst deal out of all of them. One can only imagine what happened to him after the events of the film. Despite the film presenting a happy ending, we never actually get to see any of their dreams come true. All three of them made an active choice to give up their dreams in favor of the safer route. But in light of it all, none of their choices left them completely empty-handed. Jerry got the girl of his dreams, Adam is more or less content with the life he chose and still has his passion for music, and Henri still moved to America so he could expand on his successful performance career. Sometimes things just don't work out no matter what you do, but there may be a silver lining. 
and it's always good to look on the bright side. This has been In the Real with Adam Nass, signing off.